The first, who should you choose of 2024? Video series where I go through the prior videos, questions, and comments, and help you with your hot lineup decisions. Team of the Year is coming, so I anticipate a lot of Team of the Year questions. But if you want your question answered in the next video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on so that when this video comes out next time, you can get your question in as quick as possible, and I'll help you answer it uh, and see if I can help out. Now, if you can't get your question answered in the video, make sure you come check me out live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash no sleeves 12. I go live at 2 p.m. Eastern time pretty much every single day. I'll be happy to answer your question live. All right, let's get into it. All right, we start with a spot. Icy one. SNC says, I saw some people flaming you on Reddit. That's what 90% of Reddit is, though. First of all, I have no clue why you get all of the hate. You're a good guy with good content. Thanks for all your work. Well, I have a love-hate relationship with Reddit, obviously. Uh, but the issue with Reddit is that a majority of the people on there are fantastic. They're just people that are passionate about the game. Reddit is a place where you can find hyper-focused individuals about a passionate subject that you are also interested in and have good conversation and, and good uh, you know, stuff. The issue is, is that it's also a place where anyone who cannot get their opinion heard because, uh, well, they, um, don't have a following or they don't know how to interact with actual human beings. They also live. And you know what? That's just how it goes. The more of the, you know, the negative as well as the positive will come. So I appreciate the kind words there, man. And honestly, on Reddit, I've actually enjoyed almost all my interactions on Reddit lately over the last year. So thank you if you're on Reddit and you don't flame me senseless. If you weren't a content creator, how long would you play Shell throughout the year? I'm already getting pretty burnt out on the game myself, and I've been playing less and less each week. What would you do play if you weren't rocking Shell? Oh, what a loaded question. Okay, uh, so how it used to go is I would essentially, this might be like massive OCD or ADD or whatever you want to call it, but essentially what I would do is I would buy Shell every year, and I would, around Jan, actually probably around this time, um, I would play Versus until I got top 100 on the leaderboard, and then I would just stop. And I would play probably about 50, 60 hours of franchise mode. And then that would be it for the end of the year. I didn't play Hockey Ultimate Team until I became a content creator. And even if you go back to my first two years of content on my channel, you're not really going to find any hut content because uh, I couldn't stand it. But obviously, you got to go where the attention is. It's a business. I wanted to uh, make a living. And Hockey Ultimate Team is uh, how you got to do that. So I've tried to make the mode as you know um, fun as possible. And uh, I, I, I do. I, I still have a lot of fun playing hockey ultimate team. But no sports game is meant to be played as much as we play it. It's just not. Uh, what would I be playing if I wasn't rocking shell? So again, because of like massive ADD, um, I basically get hyper focused on video games. Let me know in the comment section as well if you're like this as well. You find a game, become absolutely obsessed with it for like three weeks. The dopamine hit every time you play it gets less and less, and then you move on to the next game. Tarkov would be it though. Like if I could do everything over again with the same knowledge of how to build a channel and create content um i would have i would start playing tarkov and uh it would be my main game that game is close to the most perfect cycle and shooting and everything in their video game that you can find it's pc only um it's also extremely difficult but once you become obsessed with it it is uh it, i call it the tarkov flu and uh, it just is also, uh, the comment section right down below, someone said Diamond Dynasty. MLB is Diamond Dynasty is definitely the best Ultimate Team mode, and it's not close. I love Diamond Dynasty, and on my channel, come April, when the game launches, I will be doing a 50-50 split of NHL and MLB like I do every year. Mini Fletcher says, Sleeves, quick question. I have some untradeable 88s and 89s and one or two 90s, assuming the highest set for 87. Do I use those cards for Team of the Year or wait for other events when the trading gets it overall? Honestly, guys, it's probably trade-in for Team of the Year. Like... You got to think that what were what you would trade those in for would essentially be like power up collectibles or event collectibles, and those are pretty pointless. So uh, it's all team of the year. Like I would go as high. 90 is probably where I draw the limit. I think 87s will be what you're able to trade in. I do not think there'll be 88s. Um, yeah, 90 would probably be as high as I would go. Uh, hey, slaves, I want to say a big thank you for all the videos. I'd be way more in and over my head with Hut without them. Appreciate that, man. Uh, after Team of the Year is over, I was wondering if you think I should make Panic or Headman first. Why I'm asking is because I already have Headman's 88 Milestone card, who I love using. While Panic fits my playstyle perfectly, and Crease Crasher seems like the answer to my problem with never being able to collect rebounds. Um, if you have the the uh, Milestone card, Headman, yeah, you probably want to go Panic first if you're dead set on making both. What I'd recommend is make Panic up to 85. Uh, that way you don't go all in, and if you don't like them, you won't lose half your collectibles. 85, you can rent, essentially, because you'll get the one uh, power collectible back when you refund the one. Um, maybe play a few games with that before you want to invest. And then, yeah, at, like 
it's very rare now that events have S tier cards. S tiers, in my ability, are must makes if you want to have the most competitive team, things like that. Headman is the latest S tier in like three events. Do you think objectives will give you enough collectibles for an X Factor discount? You will never get a free fantasy team of the year, team of the season card. They will never do that because it is their cash cow events. You will get enough for roughly 30% of one. That'd be my guess. No more than that. Hey, Sleeves, no question. Just want to thank you for all you do. Happy New Year. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, guys. Also, don't thank me for what I do. You guys end up watching my content and allow me to do what I do. So the trade-off is, is more than enough, man. I appreciate it, though. Should I build X-Factor Hughes? Currently, my first line is Mario Icon. McDavid X-Factor will have his team of the year and team builder Medano. I don't think he would replace anyone there, but his X-Factor is one of the few X-Factors that I would make regardless of team of the year. Uh, for anyone that would want to know, it would be McDavid, McCarr, team of the year, uh, X-Factors, regardless if they get team of the year or not. McDavid will. McCarr, I don't know. Um, and then Eichel and Hughes would be the other ones. I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. But those ones off the top of my head. Maze says, Happy New Year's. Were you guys awake to see the bell drop? I hope Summer wasn't too afraid of all the fireworks. And did Landon sleep through her, or was he also awake? Um, I think my little guy passed out at like 11.30 for his like night feed. And me and my wife passed out at like 12.15. Guys, 30 plus, especially when you're a parent, New Year's is like one of the first to go. It's like, ugh. Until your kids are old enough to stay up and like, you know, actually it, 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 it's just over. Uh, Summer, uh, she, she actually doesn't mind fireworks. Thunder, I don't know if it's a German Shepherd thing, but thunder is terrifying for them. So, what should I, we do with all the collectibles we are sitting on? Moments, Rush, Squad, Battles. In my case, I have 70 live Moments collectibles and 28 Rush collectibles. You have an addiction. But should we turn in Moment and Rush collectibles to Diamond collectibles, or should we hope that the content team releases some banger cards that we can build through these collectibles? Never hope or never anticipate EA releasing banger cards through anything. That's how I would go. Uh, no, I'd probably turn them in for... I would try and make the Mega Players packs. I think you can... Or maybe those are Mega Packs. Not Mega Packs, Mega Players packs. Probably Diamond. The safest way is Diamond. Make the Diamond, guys. <laughs> Bonjour Sleeps. I was wondering if uh, you could do another budget episode where you go over affordable cards that aren't too expensive and still have play at this stage of the game. Happy New Year. Man, I would love to do this. Those were some of my favorite videos um, because I think they were helpful. The issue is, man, because uh, you know I'm blessed with the following I have, the second I do those budget videos, man, there's people out there that literally would just go and buy up every one of the cards, price lock them, and because I say these are budget cards, the newer players will ignore that I say that they're a budget at this price and it will pay an extra 20000 Um, I'll give you some, though, that I won't see the price for, but, like, uh, Star of the Month Larkin, if you're just starting out, great card. Global Series Sanderson off the top of my head, not bad either. Same with Team of the Week 87 overall Mural Heiskanen. Uh, those are pretty good options just for very cheap. Um, and someone down here said Live Moments bars out. Any Barzal card is a very, very good one as well. Same with Larkin. I have about 55 85s and plan on making a discount on McDavid. Should I sell the leftovers right away or attempt for a try for another one? Ooh, that's a good question. Man, I can't wait for Team of the Year this year to simply see how the market reacts. Because while everyone is trying to get as much um, cards as possible in their collection to trade in, notice how I didn't say fodder. Um... The issue is, is that this event will also bring out the most amount of packs ripped, potentially at more than any point in the year. Maybe, maybe launch, but even then, I don't think so. I think Team of the Year will have more. So what happens is, is there's an excess of that those cards. They will hit the market, and they will drop. However, everyone will be trying to buy them up. To, it's, it's a very weird supply and demand, because it's only a week. Whew. I would do it oh man, Thursday night on the week before it ends if you want to sell. People will get very desperate on the Friday before the men's team of the year is done. You only have a week to make them, remember. So, Hey, Sleeves, Happy New Year to you and your family. Do you think that Lane Hudson could be a top defenseman in the NHL? I may be a biased Habs fan, but I think he could truly be one of the best. He's got all the tools. Uh, definitely looks like a blue-chip prospect, like he's going to be an NHLer. 
which is all you can hope for. The best, that's so difficult, man. Like, would you put him up with Makar, Hughes, you know, Yossi? Like, that's, you know, like, putting the cart before the horse a little bit. It's been a long time since the Montreal Canadiens have developed a defenseman as a whole. Kind of reminds me of, like, the Chicago Bears and quarterbacks. Like, it just doesn't happen very often for Montreal. Thanks for responding. Appreciate it. No problem. Jordan, uh, happy new year, my man. You smashed it this year. Happy hut goat for me. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, we use it in FIFA a lot, too. I'm assuming he means the word fodder. Yeah, guys, that is literally just the correct word to use. I don't know what the meme is about the word fodder that everyone's talking about. It's probably because everyone's just talking about team of the year. That is literally the correct use of the word. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, Foster says, hey, slaves, I noticed with the Nations of Hockey that more power-up collectibles are in the solo moments for the event. Do you think that this is a better, that you can get more power-up collectibles in the solo moments? Yeah, anytime that they actually reward the solo moments is awesome because I think live moments was a great addition to the game. I just think that there was four more other modes that needed the love before the um, offline challenges. However, when they're done well, live moments is really fun. Like, I actually think it it, it, it makes sense. Also, do you think the market is going to explode up in prices? Would it be useful to sell all of my tradable players during the week of Team of the Year to get coins? I have a lot of tradable fodder. Uh, I honestly don't think that the prices will go up more than what they are right now. Uh, Thursday, going into Friday, uh, I think that the, the cards will be at their highest that they will be for the entire event. Again, I could be wrong, but I just... Like, no one's factoring in how many cards or how many packs will be opened, man. I will not be opening any, by the way. I, will, I do not pay for packs anymore. Full no money spent. I, also, another question, because I don't know if I'm going to get it here. In terms of saving packs, I don't really think that there's worth in saving packs, guys. You're never going to pull a team of the year. So having the knowledge of what you've got to work with is more beneficial. On top of that, they they usually do this thing where they don't release a lot of higher overall cards during team of the week so that you can't pull any, which is, again, another greasy tactic. It might just be happenstance and coincidence. But if there's a reduction in 88s, 87s, and 89s during that week, don't be stunned. So it's actually better to do it beforehand because there's more cards in the player pool that you can pull that you could use for trade-ins and things like that. So, um, again, that might be over the top, but I'm not. The reason why I'm saving packs is simply because I'm a content creator and everyone wants to see packs on Friday. Uh, I have X-Factor, McDavid, and Hughes leveled up. What about about 16 power-ups and cards saved 400-ish? Gretzky, Shanahan, should I pick a new team of the year or get both Mikey D and Baby Huey? Mickey D. I'm assuming that means McDavid. Well, yes, McDavid, guys, uh, sorry, uh, McDavid, do everything you can to make his a team of the year card, whether you have his X Factor or not. That is numero uno. There will, he is the safest, best card that you are going to dump everything into. Do not overthink it. Unless he gets a, God, I guess that's a blanket safe. If he doesn't get wheels as his X Factor ability, God, it'll be interesting. Wait until my video comes out. <laughs> Headman or not team builder 90. I have not used Headman's 89. I have spoken with a few um, of my friends that are at, like the top end players in the community and Headman clears them. So just take that for what it's worth. I have not used Headman yet. I'm waiting until the event into team of the year is done. No, no money spent video this week. I had a delay in no money spent because those videos take me about four hours to make, even though they're only 10 minutes long um and uh holidays so i just couldn't expect at least one a week now again probably two for the next little while if you haven't watched my no money spent series go watch it i i think they're enjoyable uh yo sleeves what forward should i make to have my for my bottom six my top six have already been called for been watching you for two years now good content and great advice as well for using your favorite players have a great holiday you want to be honest with you go make a line of like what you think might be fun so I'm messing around with this. I pulled the team of the week, um, the team of the week, Kreider. It had total eclipse. I have Mark Bell, total eclipse. And there was somebody else off the top of my head, I can't remember it, that I might just make my whole fourth line, gold total eclipse, and mess around. That's what I would do. Like, if you're, you know what I mean? Have some fun or make it your favorite players. Like, Jerome Ginla's captain card, absolute piss of a card, but, you know, use your favorite players. 
Hey, slaves, I currently uh, have a rather large hole in my top six forwards and have about 350 coins to spend. Uh, I have Medano playing C on the first line, McDavid on the wing. Do you think I should be looking at a center and move Medano to the wing, or should I just find a good left hand winger to play behind McDavid? I would find a good left hand winger to play behind McDavid because there's so many. Like Jack Hughes, like any of the Jack Hughes cards, you don't need his X Factor, would be fine. Um, you could go with, like, you could make Tim Stutzla from this last event, like, for example. Uh, there's a lot of good left handed wingers. It's probably the position that has the most options for you. Hey, Slaves, I love your stuff. I have Solani, Power of Icons, Abinijad, Natchez, and McKinnon. One of them has to play C. The others are my top three left wingers. Where do I play them? Also, my other top three Cs are Captain Sackick and Messier. Who out of those two and the center of the four should play in that lineup? Oh, my God, dude. I'm not smart enough to decipher that question. Solani, is Abinijad, Natchez, and McKinnon. One of them has to play C. Natchez. Um, the other three are my top three left wingers. Uh, I would go Solani if he's maxed. No, McKinnon if he's maxed, then Solani, then Zabinjad. Also, my other th top three Cs are Sakic, Messier. Who out of those two and the center of the four others should play where in the lineup? Sakic should be... No, Natchez should be your first line center. Then Sakic, then Messier. How many likes can I get the, for the word fodder? Yeah, see, like, I don't know. Only one, so get shit on. Uh, Ace Sleeves, Happy New Year's. Thoughts on Finland upsetting Sweden after such a slow sweat? Well, let me tell you. Canada didn't do much better. Sweden's or Finland's team is like not great. This is the like I said this in another video. They either win gold or they like are close to relegation. There's like never like an in between. So uh, Finland was was pretty surprising. Um, but uh, in the end, it doesn't matter. They're gonna go up against USA, and USA is nasty. Uh, they were the favorite going in, and I don't see them losing now, especially with Canada gone. Yo, Sleeves, I got two questions for you. One about Hut, one outside of it. First question is, do you have any New Year's resolutions going into the year? Second question is, do you think in the next game they should introduce goalie strategies? All right, first one, do I have any resolutions? Uh, I'm not a big resolution guy because I usually, um, you know, I've, I've gone through massive weight loss transformations. I've gone through grinding YouTube and all sorts of stuff like that. In terms of resolutions... Um, no, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn how to be a dad. I guess that would be one. Uh, and I'm just trying to really hone in my day. Uh, I think that's something that's overrated is just having the same day. 95% of the time will benefit you in all aspects of life. Um, if you know that like, this is what you do on a set day, um, you know, you can go out and, you know, go, go get blasted with the boys every once in a while and things like that. And as long as you know, the other 95% of the time you're doing well, that's it. Um, I have dropped 17 pounds since September. I would like to get back to like 170. My peak was 149 at 10% body fat, but that was like 2018, 2019, right at my wedding. Uh, I'll never be that again because it was incredibly unhealthy and I was very dumb in how I did it. Um, so no, I'm not really. I want my silver play button on YouTube, but that's 100,000. I got a long way to go. Uh, introduce any goalie strategies. I would, dude, I have been banging the drum since I've become a game changer in 2018 for new strategy in the game. I use the meme all the time every year. Mark Crawford in NHL 04 walks us through how to use overload protect, uh, overload um, behind the net and cra cra crease crasher or crash the net. Uh, that's a joke. L like, think what video game gets away with the same play styles for 20 years. Like, I'm not saying bring back creative play because I think in this landscape, EA wouldn't be able to handle the fact that we would have just the nerds out there finding the go-to goals that work every time and we'd never be able to keep up. But, like, give us five options. Even introducing one new one would allow us to drastically change how the game would play. More than any other skating engine or tuner or anything like that. A new strategy, please, for the love of God. Um, A goalie strategy would be interesting, but... They've really got to figure out a way to make smaller goaltenders matter. And someone in an older video said, allow them under six foot to have multiple gold X factor abilities activated. Something like that might be kind of interesting. So that's going to do it for this episode of who should you choose? Thank you guys again for watching. Be sure to tune into the live stream. Uh, 1 PM Eastern time team of the year, Friday, be in that stream. Don't miss it. See you guys next time.